and this is going to be my latest project turning a dilapidated back of an old van into a shower block off grid so stay tuned because this one's going to be fun this is the inside of the old van and as you can see it's twisted and it currently it was previously used by sheep so if you look at the floor you see that the floor is a complete disaster zone there are big blobs of poop it's completely been bombed out and it's gonna make one hell of a transformation and as you can see, I pulled out the digger to straighten up the structure because it was so bent. So I've got the digger just touching that corner there. And it is a godsend. I've taken the floor up in the trailer and I've found the metal joists, or would have been the bottom of it. Looks like it's missing a couple, but that's not putting me off. Now, what I want to do is I want to suppress the plant growth inside. And I want to do that by sprinkling cement. And I've started doing it in this corner. As you can see, I've done one strip. Now, I'm going to do the rest and that because plant life hates cement. So, by putting cement down onto it... I'm just building the partitions for the showers now and I'm using a plasterboard and then I'm going to clad onto it. Now it's really important when you do plasterboarding that when you put the screws in they're flush because if you don't do them flush they'll be overhanging and obstruct your work. I'm going to cut this piece of plasterboard off, so what you need to do is score it first and then a bit of pressure it will fold there you go, you can see it's folded and if we go around to the other side you can see there's the crease, now all you have to do is Using our knife, cut this piece of paper. It's literally just a piece of paper. Bear with, because I'm holding a phone in my hand. Boom, there it goes, cut off. Nice and easy. So here on the front of the trailer, uh, right on the left hand side where I'm gonna put the door, you can see that there's this stick it down bit. Now it's just about head height as I go through the door. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that off because I don't want anybody banging their head on it. And I'm gonna use my Milwaukee Hacksaw and hopefully it will just chop straight off. I'm just putting some trim on the face of the trailer, just to liven it up a little bit. I've already put a bit of an architrave around the door, which I've just used. Bit of roofing lath, nothing fancy. Now I'm gonna add a special panel to the bottom. Now I've been using a lot of this rusted up old tin, which I've got knocking about on the land. And this is the piece that I'm gonna be using. It's got a good couple of holes inside, uh, a bit raggedy, and uh, just like me, I quite like it. So um, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to temporarily screw it on, and then one side needs to be cut. So I'm going to do that now. So for this job, I'm going to use my cordless Milwaukee grinder. 
it is an extremely handy tool to have if you haven't got electricity which i haven't and you're in the middle of a field or if you're in a workshop and you just don't want to be plugging stuff in all the time this little bad boy goes and i've used it for so many different jobs i've been up on a roof cutting tiles with it i've been in the kitchen cutting little tiles with it it will cut anything i've got different discs for cutting metal i've got discs for cutting wood uh, I've got also got a big sanding piece that goes on it and it's great, it takes off the edges from anything. So uh, I'd highly recommend. Also I've got a speed nut just there. So you press the button, turn it by hand and saves finding the key all the time and the keys always get lost. Drama. Right, so I'm going to cut this panel off. Right, so I've cut the end and now it is actually a really good fit. But what I've decided to do is I'm going to put a wood treatment on this face timber before I fit the panel. Uh, but before, so in order to do that, as I've only just decided that that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to stop the video, walk 50 metres like to get onto my quad bike, drive half a mile until I get to the workshop to find the treatment and then drive back, park and walk all the way back over here. So all that's probably going to take me about 10, 15 minutes, so I'll pause the video. And just like that, I'm back. So, I've managed to find some Krupinol Wild Thyme, which I've used before. Got a bit in there. I'm going to pop it open. And as, as always, with these tins, They've been sitting about for a bit. They don't want to open. There we go. Yay. Right, so I'm gonna pour some into a fresh container. Now, if there's any that I don't use, I can stick it back in the tin. But if I take it directly from the tin, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get loads of crap, it's gonna get on the brush, gonna go in the tin, it's gonna end up at the bottom of the tin. And then when I get to the bottom of the tin I'm using, I'll just be getting all crap out of it. So, I'm take these off. And get this on. There we go, one coat on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit that rusty old panel and we can see what it looks like under the holes. Wow, I mean, that is a work of art. I love it. So, now that we've got the base panel on, which does look awesome, what I don't want is for any little children to come round and start fiddling with the top piece where potentially they could lose a finger. So what I'm gonna do is I've got another piece of Laugh here, which I've already painted, and I'm going to screw it across the very top. Just like that. Now I'm going to level it because I can't tell if it's level. Miles off. 
I'm just gonna touch up the little bits on it where I've got my fingers. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So now I know that I've protected the face of the trailer and it's going to be mold free, it's not going to start rotting away and it looks very pleasant. aqua panels in the showers and uh, they're uh, like 25 centimeters long and they come in about a 2.6 meter height and um, as you can see they've got a little sparkle in them so they're, they're quite pretty panels uh, fairly cheap a lot cheaper than tiling uh, you can get 10 panels I think it's 10 panels delivered on eBay 50 quid can't go wrong with that really, to the door, test a couple of days. And they've got like a tongue and groove system on them. So they literally just clip together. And I've been fitting them, now you can fit them with, uh, you could use adhesive or silicon. I've been fitting them with just some cheap silicon. Well, when I say cheap silicon, I mean silicon, which isn't cheap anymore because years ago on site, I used to buy tubes of silicon for like 50p and today, you're buying the tube of silicon that's cheap for £2.50. So, not particularly cheap. Anyway, I'm going at the moment, I'm fitting the edges with the panels. Now, I've pre cut a load, and they're quite literally, I am silicon them on. So, I'll show you how I'm doing that now. The panels have got a groove system, a wider groove on the top and a smaller groove on the bottom. So I'm going to fit the small groove to the bottom, then when I put the next panel on top, it'll just clip into the bigger piece. So I've got my panel and I'm just going to put two blobs of silicon. They can use any colour I've just got clear. So it could be white, brown, whatever colour you've got. I'm just going to put them together, bit of pressure and nothing major. Okay, next one. Now each, they've all come with plastic coating on, so every time you need to take the coating off, get it the right way around, turn it over, silicone. Yeah, and as it goes on, it just pushes to, closes up the gap, bit of pressure for the silicone. Now once the silicone does set, probably take about, I don't know, a good few hours, it will be, Absolutely, boom, 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 proof. Two of silicon. What I don't need to worry about is getting it too close to the edge because each edge is going to have a trim on it, and the trim's going to go around each corner, and it's going to cover all the crappy cut. So I don't need to be too fussy about cutting it. Now I've been cutting these 
just with my Hapsal. Um, and you can really pretty much cut these with anything. You cut them with a hand saw if you've got one. You cut them with a jigsaw. Cut them with a circuit saw, chop saw, anything really. The cuts never beautiful on these because they're just cheap plastic, but whatever's easy. Yeah. Still going for it. Got to fit nine of these on every every end. There's three ends, so you do the math. Nine, 18, 27. There's quite a few there. And uh, I've already cut them all, so I'm doing really well. Now, I've been really cracking on with the shower block the last couple of days. I've got some great videos and some good pictures so if um any of you guys are thinking about building your own shower block unlikely but um yeah i put loads of tips tricks i certainly have came across loads of things during the build that are absolutely out of the ordinary um which is, makes the job interesting, of course. Now, I know a lot of you guys aren't, haven't been in the trade, probably DIYers, and uh, you haven't got 20 odd years experience like I have. Well, that doesn't mean you can't turn your hands to any job. Uh, there's always a way to get around jobs, and I tell you what, when I first started out in the trade, oh, I wasn't loads of kids to teach me, but my good old friend YouTube. If I needed to learn to do something, I'd go to YouTube and can always learn that particular thing, but often I could get down the right path to learning how to do that, uh, which was always handy, definitely. So here we go, finished up that column, and I must admit, it's looking really good. As you come through the door, I've ended up with this funny little space which is bit of a bit of a hole really so what I've done is I've just literally panelled it so I blocked it off just to make it look a bit prettier and to do that I've literally put a piece of lath straight down I've siliconed these to here and then Behind the door frame, I've siliconed this face to there. Um, and once the silicon sets, it will really hold it well. Right guys, I'm gonna show you how to fit the center or the top piece of the waist for your tray. Now, you think it was straightforward, but sometimes it's a bit tricky. So when I get it in the hole, start to tighten it up essentially you do need a special tool so if i put it in a bit of a turn start getting it onto its My waist is a little bit too low. It's about a centimetre too low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top cover in place. I'm gonna put my finger inside. I'm gonna hook the waist piece. I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm gonna turn to get some traction. Tricky. So here we go. So I'm gonna get my finger in there. I've got to hold it and this is my special tool because there's little grooves in the top. And if these go in, you can turn it. Otherwise, you've got to try and do it by hand and uh, tricky. You could, in a pinch, cut yourself a little bit of wood or a packer and get it in there.
Ah. And it wants to be done up really tight. I mean, super duper tight. Now, I'm working in a situation where there's nothing below me. But if I was working in an upstairs bathroom, I would always silicon before I fitted it to make sure it would never leak. I'm gonna silicon this shower tray. A few things to remember when you're doing shower trays. Number one, get some tissue and make sure it's super dry. If it's wet around the seals, when you come to put the silicon on, it will not set. Also, the tray wants to be really clean. Unlike this one, where I've been walking on it in my muddy boots. But, as long as the sides are nice and tidy, that's the main thing, but I'm gonna give it a quick sweep off. Right, so that's what the big bit's taking care of. I've got some tissue and I'm gonna rub it all round the edge to make sure it's dry and there's no other bits of debris knocking about. Okay, that's done. Now when it regards to silicone, when it comes to putting them in a the shower or around a bath, always use the best silicone you can get your hands on. If you use a cheap silicon that only costs a couple of pounds, ultimately that silicon is going to get mouldy and scabby and not last super long. I'm using a silicon from Everbuild. Now, this is not the most expensive silicon, but as it says on here, mould resistant. And that is pretty much what you really want to be getting mould resistance. It's that skanky mould you get in your silicon that goes all black. So I've already cut my tip and you can see. I've cut it off, not too big, uh, not too small, so just about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the back first, then the two sides and then I'm going to smooth it off. So here we go. So there's the back. Now, when I've been in between, I also clean off that nozzle because the little bits of silicon start sticking out of it. Now, when you're putting your silicon on, you want to do it in long stretches, as long as you can. You don't want to keep pumping the trigger, because then it will all be blobby. Nice, long, slow pumps, and then it'll be a lot straighter. Now once you've got your silicon on, it's always handy if you've got a bit of box for cleaning. Now, I've seen there's tons and tons of silicon tools you can buy online. Uh, loads of different shapes and sizes. And it's always really tempting to get them. And <clears throat> believe me, I've bought all the tools over the years. Ultimately, you lose them, or they get skanky, and oh, you always get bored of them. Just get bored of them. Best way for silicon, in I, my own personal opinion, is fingers and water. Now, if you haven't got any water to hand, you old trusty water. Cardboard. Don't use tissue paper when you're cleaning. Always wipe it on cardboard or a bit of wood. Or something solid. Tissue paper, it gets really wet. Not great. So, I'm gonna start with the bath. I'm gonna go right hand, middle finger. Pull it through and look, the silicone starts to come off on your fingers. So, wipe it off, clean finger, go again. 
push it into the corner. Nice long pulls, just like when you put it on. Takes off all the excess. Right, now I'm going to do the left hand side. So I bring There we go, wiping it off. And again, to the end. Change your hands, want to go back. And on top again. And ideally, ideally when you finish the run, especially in a small shower, it's very easy to do. You want to end with one complete pull. So there's no start or stop marks in it. Okay, uh, here we go. Straight through. Excellent. I'm doing the left hand side. And the reason I do half at a time is because you can see the silicon starts to build up on your finger. If it gets too much, if you do the whole lot and it all builds up in one go, you'll have a big fat blob on your hand, but it will affect the, the finish line. Okay, and then one run, top to bottom. Lovely. So, there we go, that's how you silicon. Shower. This is the standard door that I'm going to fit on the shower block. Now, to protect it, I could do a couple of things. I could varnish it, I could stain it, but I'm going to torch it. And I'm going to torch it to get it really black and it will protect it against the weather. So I'm going to show you a quick video of me doing that now. Today I'm going to be opening and fitting a camping shower. So I've got my box here. Uh, so I'm going to open it up and let's have a look inside. Now these camping showers, you can pick them up online and they are quite readily available. Now I've already used one and I must admit they're really good. So if you've got a situation uh, like myself where you need a shower but you're outside and you've got no mains electricity for instance or no mains gas these are great because they literally use a battery and a bottle of LPG so opening the box here it is the boiler so what's inside got the nozzle spray yourself instructions handy and the boiler itself it's not very big and it's quite light so here we go i just lift it up with one hand and the box that's it pretty much get rid of the box so these boilers are designed and probably made in china but therefore just go go camping so you can literally bang them in the back of the car trailer take them with you there's a hole here so you can literally just hang it up so it could even be on the side of your van, it could be on a tree. Connections underneath, and I'll show you what they're all for. And then it's just straightforward. Turn it on and it's go. So here's the shower now. I bought this shower, I think I got it on Amazon. Uh, probably it was about 160 quid. So a uh, bit of a variation on price. You can get them a bit cheaper, but you can pay more. Uh, now this one is a tankless and it does say 10 l 10 litre so i'm not sure if it's 10 litres a minute but i do know something to do with 10 litres so as i said i've used one already and they are really good now bear in mind you cannot use these indoors not to be indoors because obviously it doesn't have a flu on it so let's get into the fitting so underneath we've got one two three First one, it's labelled gas inlet. Second one, hot water outlet. Number three, cold water inlet. So this flap here holds your battery. So it takes two DD batteries. Uh, that, and once they're in, the last donkeys, pretty cheap obviously, as you realise. Um, and it's like, it says that it's sparkless. So when it lights, 
must be through heat or something. So, okay, gas inlet. So as we undo this plastic cap, we've got to put our, it comes with the piece, which is brass, and here's the piece. And it has a rubber, the rubber goes in there. So we need to put that on and tighten it up. Now when you do tighten it up, you need to make sure that you grip the back piece because the back piece and the back piece has got uh, it's got a piece on it, so you can do that. I don't think you need to do it super tight. I think just pretty much as tight as you might do a a nut on water because it's got that rubber seal in there. Right, that's nice and tight. And then onto here, we need to fit our hose. Here's our hose. Now I bought a hose and and I bought the piece that goes onto your bottle. Got them together. I think I got them on Amazon. About 11 quid or something like that. So it says in the instructions, uh, it needs to have a specific bar, blah, blah. When I looked for that specific bar online, it was almost impossible to find. Obviously, because it's a Chinese import. So, so just so you know, this is a 37 millibar, and it's just a standard one that goes on your propane bottle, and it has a push piece on the end. So that's all you need. Don't need to go around going crazy. Now, to be fair, I struggle to get these on here, so I've all tried all sorts of different things. One of the main things to do is to just get it nice and wet. Before I do that, I'm going to put the uh, locking ring on. So I'll have to do it after that. I'm going to give this a nice little bit of wet. Mm. And then I'll try and get it in there. Oh, it's tough. On it is, and then obviously we need to put a. Uh, I can't what these are called. Tightening ring thing. Of course, I should know what they're called, really. But anyway, no, it's perfect. Okay, screw that on. Nice and tight. So that's done. Now we need to put this piece onto here. So Sam again. Put that on. Don't forget. Now we need to get this nice and wet. But how to do that? I don't want to be putting my mouth all over it as it's a bit low. But maybe I can put some spitty on my finger. There we go. Lube it up. Mmm, that's just about right. Okay, so Sam again. I'm going to try and put it on a bit of a twist in action that I find helps. to the first rung. That's good. Is this one real thick? Ooh. Good. There we go. Now sir come on along is our hot water outlet. So, if we go into our little bag of trickies. Now, there's the hose. Okay, now I'm sure, drop that rubber. I think it's gone through that hole. Is it? That is definitely the one thing you don't want to do. It's dropping your rubber on the floor. Uh, but I do have a spare rubber. 
But luckily, anyway, we don't need that just at the moment. Because it's on that end. Now this end has got the rubber on. So this piece goes onto your hot water outlet. So I'm gonna unscrew that plastic cap. And then this screws straight onto there. Now obviously, hot water outlet, obvious. This is gonna be your shower head. Uh, it does come with the shower head. Now, the shower heads are all right, to be fair. They are plastic, but that doesn't mean they're completely crap. Uh, they're not too bad. Uh, they've got very fine spray, but I must admit the boy lad gives out a fair old whack of water, which is a winner. So there's that. And it also comes with a bracket. Now there's your bracket, so you could attach that to, I don't know, if you were straight out wilderness, you're not gonna be taking a drill with you to screw it to a bit of wood. But if you're setting it up in a camper situation, then potentially you could make it work. Anyway, so, and then our last one is the cold water inlet now what i find best to put on these is a flex now here i've got a flex this is what a flex looks like brand new now i've got these flexes from where did i get these from i got them from tool station and they're about one pound 60 or one pound 80 so i can see they're flexy now the end that we're going to attach to the boiler has got a rubber inside and so it's very easy to fit. Now I always fit these generally with kitchen taps or bathroom taps, stuff like that. And as the tap comes through, that goes on. Well, it does with uh, bathroom taps, but not kitchens. Anyway, and then the other end, off it screws, we've got an olive in there. So this end we want to attach to the water. Now, you can connect these up to a water pump and get water straight from a bucket or a stream. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that, I'm just, oh, I've got mains water, luckily. So I'll be connected to mains water. Now my supply will just connect straight onto this and it will be going in. So connecting this, it's just straight forward. We're going to be screwing it on. And doesn't need loads of pressure again because of that rubber that's inside. Okay, so here they are, closer. Here's our gas, our hot water, and our flex that we've just fitted. And this is where the batteries go. So looking at the face, we've got our gas regulator. This is winter or summer. Now, I'm just coming into winter, so I want it on winter. But if it is summer, you just flick it over to summer, and I think it just gives you less heat. The water regulator is how much water is going to start coming out. So if you max it, it sprays more. Minimum, sprays less. Probably going to be about there, to be fair. And the gas regulator, how much gas is it going to take? And there's a fine balance between this one and this one. So if you need, if it's, you know, if you put your gas regulator on max, you're gonna get more water. Turn it down, you're gonna get less water, one or the other. So now we're gonna mount the boiler. Now what I've done is I've put a single screw just up here in the structure. Now that could be a tree or anything. And I'm gonna hang the boiler on that single screw. So here we go. I've got the boiler and you can see there at the top, there's three holes. So as long as one of them catches it, that's a winner. And there we go, that's caught that. Now we're gonna plumb it in. So we need the cold water feed. Now, that's going into this one here, the first one. I could have connected mine, so I wanted to use it onto a push fit. Now, 
go. And then we need our hot water. So don't forget the head that came with the shower. Here it is. And just simply screws on. That's on, and then we need to connect it onto our gas bottle. So, to make the gas connection, here's our standard hose that we fitted earlier, and here's our bottle. <clears throat> now, when you screw it on, it's a reverse thread, which means instead of being a righty-tighty, it's a lefty-loosey to get it on. So. Right, and then we're gonna definitely make sure it's on nice and tight. Okay, that's on nice and tight. Right then, let's fire this bad boy up. Now, it starts, it automatically turns on when the boiler senses the water. So until it gets the water, it doesn't come on. Now I've put a little turn off valve on the water, so as soon as I turn it off, it will fire up and you'll know it's come on because there's a digital display here and it tells us our temperature. So let's go for it. Right, so as you see the display comes straight on. Look at that, Mr. Water. Oh my gosh. Perfect for a shower. Whether you're indoors or outdoors. Now, I'll just bring it a little bit closer. You'll be able to see that the temperature is reading 29 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees. Now I've got the middle sensor, the middle knob turned to winter because it is cold. And up to 30 degrees, which is really, really warm for an outdoor shower. So there we go, guys. How to fit an outdoor shower so if you want to go camping or you just want to make something up people even use these to clean down their horses or animals but very simple to set up relatively cheap and an all-round bonus really obviously i don't know about longevity of these things but i can keep you updated on that now i've got mine rigged up and i'm going to use mine inside this trailer for a thermostatic shower uh, but that's another video anyway, so uh, good luck fitting yours. And there we go guys, one project finished. Yes! They don't all get finished, but uh, this one did actually get finished. And it's been a, an enjoyable project. Probably took me about two weeks in total to finish. Uh, Cost-wise, this job has cost probably just under a thousand pounds to complete. Uh, lots of random costs thrown in there, obviously. We needed three, that's it, one, two, three separate camping boilers uh, to run the showers. And each one is about, yeah, 180 quid, then plus a mix of shower inside, so there's another 60 quid thrown in. Shower curtains, paneling, stud work, plywood, which cost a fortune, bits and pieces. I obviously got a few lovely little pieces and things just from, I already had knocking about, for instance, the door. Salvaged, love it. Came from an old goat shed and it was actually being used as a bed for the goats. Uh, it looks like an old 
Well, so it could have been an external door or an internal door to be fair, it's pretty solid. Uh, so that came out and I used that. I'll pop a picture for you to see because I got a picture of it when I took it out of the bed. Um, other little bits and pieces. Um, the structure itself was obviously the back of a, a van or a truck at some point. It was left here on my land as I moved in and uh, so I thought oh, it was it was perfect to use. And I wasn't sure if I was going to use it to do the shower block because I was thinking first of all about just building a new one. So I started costing it up and obviously we needed floor joists, plywood, stud work for the walls, uh, joists for the ceiling. Then I was looking at like corrugated cladding. Uh, started totting it all up. Costs were originally straight up hitting nearly four grand in materials. Uh, and this was literally just for the structure. And I'm not talking then the showers and the internal fittings and everything else. So I was mm, in an hour in and then I remembered, oh, oh yes, we've got that back of a van. So it wasn't in this position, it was actually on another field. And I was thinking, how am I gonna move this? Cause I, you, could, you could rock it, but it was too heavy. I ended up moving it with my digger. Uh, and I, I, I got the blade under the up under the side and I, I reached over the top and I grabbed hold of it and I tilted it back and literally just drew it over the fields and got it into position. And then I thought, oh, that's great. But then uh, once I started putting a level on it and stuff, it was way out. So I ended up having to jack up the back end, probably nearly a foot. Obviously, does it matter whether or not it's level well i can live with it not being level but once you fit in one two three showers them shower trays need to go in level if you don't fit a shower tray level the water runs one way and boom it starts spilling out uh, so obviously that's a bit of drama so there we go lighting wise i don't have an electric down the field so I was looking at LED lights and I fitted LED lights in there. They've got a little remote control. They're not the best in the world, but they're okay. They're all right, not too bad. Give up enough light. Um, now flooring wise, I had to rebuild the floor that was in the van because the floor that was in it was been abused by 200 sheep over about 10 years, I reckon and it was literally falling apart. So I had to take that out. It had some steel struts in there. Some of them was missing. So I had to put some timber struts in and then a, a ply floor. Uh, and I think that was probably one of the hardest jobs on on, on because because just the way it all was. And so for, and because it's a steel structure, I had to drill into the steel structure, into some of the struts to obviously to fit battens and whatever I was gonna fit. And, um, and I started the job and I had a 10 pack of like 3.5 mil um, drill bits. And gradually over about a week, every one of them snapped, snap, 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 because I was drilling into so much metal. Uh, so obviously I just ordered another 10 to get back in my box. Uh, and obviously the end here, as you can see, if you remember from the original video, it was completely open and it was just a complete opening. And so, uh, and as you know, I put the door, plied off one section. I've used a bit of rusty old, bit of rusty old tin, Colgate tin there. And it, I just think it looks the business. It really does look good. Uh, the roof was leaking a little bit. So I had to stick a bit of flash band up there. And it weren't leaking loads, just a little bit. But obviously I don't want water all going into my project. Um, anyway, so, there you go guys thanks for watching and um please do support me by giving me a thumbs up giving me a subscribe and a share uh, it all does help and uh keep tuned because i've got loads of great projects on the go catch you later